forcing the pace on emission-free mobility for everyone. This year alone, we're going to launch eight all-electric or electrified cars. By 2024, we're going to invest 11 billion euros in electromobility, more than any other car maker, with the aim of getting e-mobility out of its niche and making it affordable for many people. By 2030, almost every second Volkswagen driven in Europe and China is going to be powered by electricity. This might seem inconceivable from today's perspective, but it's going to happen. You just said, when it comes to e-mobility, Falkwagen's stepping up the pace. What are the next steps? Well, for now, we're looking forward to the launch of the ID3. This car will hit dealerships in the summer. And the second half of the year, we'll see the next world premiere of an electric car by Volkswagen. Here's a sneak preview. It's still wearing camouflage. But one thing's clear, we'll be seeing additions to the ID family. Yes, you might know this car under the name ID Next, but as of today, it'll be officially called ID4. It's a great car with super dynamic styling, the first electric SUV based on Volkswagen's state-of-the-art modular electrification toolkit. Can you give us a glimpse of what's under the hood? Well, yes, this car is setting technical standards. Of course, it's fully connected and has an aerodynamic, almost streamlined design, giving it a highly attractive range of up to 500 kilometers. This car just looks great, and I'm sure many customers will love it. We want to man manufacture it in China, Europe and the US. It's definitely something for customers to look forward to. Thanks for now, Mr. Brandstetter, and see you later. As you can see, Volkswagen is going through exciting times. Ten years from now, almost every other VW is going to be an electric car, at least in China and Europe. But until then, we'll be going through a traditional period with conventional IC engines, battery-driven systems and hybrid cars running side by side, and a special one we've brought it for you here. Take a look. The new Touareg R. Eine ideale Symbiose aus hoher Leistung und elektrischer Effizienz. From enormous power output and electric efficiency. Der erste Hybrid unter den R-Modellen. The first hybrid among the R-Models. So this is it, the new Touareg R with hybrid technology, and he's the man who oversaw his creation. Welcome development head, Frank Welch. Hello, Mr. Welch. What is so special of the Touareg R? Well, the new Touareg has got something that didn't exist in the Touareg lineup before, and that's a plug-in hybrid system, which means that it's now possible to go electric and to drive with zero emissions. And I'm talking about speeds of 40 kilometers per hour and more. And in my opinion, that's one of the things that make it special. For us, plug-in technology plays an important role, and we're going to use it in much of our portfolio. In fact, this year alone, we're planning to launch for plug-in hybrids. And so what is it that makes it a Touareg R? Well, you see, there are two hearts beating in that car, an electric motor and a tried and tested V6 engine. And when these two hearts beat together, you get quite a lot of power and torque, and I think that approximately 340 kilowatts and 700 newton meters speak for themselves. And mind you, that's not just interesting for those who love dynamic driving, it's equally interesting for customers who want to pull loads such as trailer. The Touareg R will have a towing capacity of 3.5 tons, which makes it one of the best tractor units on the market. So it's a genuine workhorse and a clean one too. And our second hybrid car is also electric, the Golf GTE. Let's have a look at that. Now, Mr. Welch, we've seen the Golf GT before, but you've evolved it, haven't you? 
Well, most importantly, we've given the battery a boost. This may sound simple, but we've actually got 50% or 13 kilowatt hours more capacity, which in a real-life scenario means that the car's all-electric emission-free range is now 60 kilometers. For most commuters, that should be enough. But the letters GT also stand for sportiness. Is it fair to say that the Golf GTE combines the best of both worlds? Absolutely. This is where the GTE mode comes in. In GTE mode, the two drive systems work hand-in-hand, in hand, and that means sporty, dynamic driving. Mr. Welch, thank you for your time. We just heard that the GTE stands for efficiency and great driving appeal, but the GT family has a lot more to offer. Three cars, in fact, the GTE, the GTD, and the following magic letters. It's sporty. It's dynamic. Here's the 8th generation Golf GTI. Mr. Brandstetter, good to see you again. What's so special about the GTI? Well, the GTI is a sports car that makes heart speed faster and is affordable. That was true when it was launched, and it still is. And here's its recipe for success. Take a lightweight, compact car, put in a powerful engine, the dynamic suspension, and hey, presto, you've got a sports car for everyone. It's hard to believe that the GTI almost failed to see the light of the day. Oh, yes. When the uh, GTI was launched in 1976, there were lots of discussions about how many units we were going to sell. Preliminary estimates said 500 units per year. But what can I say? In the meantime, we've sold 2 million units of this icon, a successful experiment, if you ask me. Definitely. Tell us what makes the Golf GTI Mark 8 so special. Well, obviously, the Golf GTI has all the virtues of a Golf, but on the inside, it's a digital revolution. Its design has become even sportier, and if you look at the front end, you'll see an illuminated radiator grill and LED headlights, which together form this wonderful wide horizontal bar, giving the car a powerful stance on the road. Underneath, there are the GTI's signature honeycomb-patterned air intakes. They give the car a very sporty appearance. It's a great design feature with integrated fog lights. Really cool. That's what makes this Golf GTI so distinctive and special. And about uh, technical terms, in technical terms? Well, in technical terms, this car has been completely revised. Inside, there are new digital controls. The digital cockpit is fitted as standard, and as fans of sporty driving will be pleased to hear that the suspension setup is now infinitely variable, thanks to a slider, and I can tell you that's great fun. And now the customers can even choose how big a leap into the future they want to take. The GTE and GTI are Mark 8 and have the same power. That's right, both the GTE and the GTI deliver 180 kilowatts, and just to wind up, let me say that Volkswagen customers can choose between different kinds of mobility, and I'm going to choose this GTI for this year's word to say GTI Festival. Mr. Brandstetter, I hope you'll have fun at the festival. Otherwise, thank you for joining us today, and I'll see you again this afternoon. And we'll talk about digitalization, e-mobility, and many more things, of course. At 2 o'clock, we'll start. See you later. Volkswagen.